Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you to uh, this second Sunday after the Epiphany, and I won't give you a quiz on what the Epiphany is this morning. Maybe next week, but not today. So welcome. Um, at 12 o'clock, DYC, DYAC will be meeting in the sanctuary, and uh, at, immediately following the worship, uh, the church council will be meeting in the Koinonia Center. Tomorrow is a holiday, so there's no AHG, no trail light. Everyone's taking it off in honor of Junior's birthday. <laughs> I stand up. Wednesday, the case for Christ. Oh, and Tuesday. Tuesday, we have to wish Trudy DeGroote a happy birthday. So she's not with us. Happy birthday, Thursday, Women of Life monthly Bible study. Next Sunday, Sunday School for All Ages, our worship celebration at its regular time, 10.30, followed by a potluck luncheon, and at 1 o'clock, our annual meeting. And just so you are aware, I did not specifically put the annual reports out prior to worship, but they will be available on the back table after worship. The encouragement is for you to take the annual report and read them and be ready for any discussion that you might have regarding uh, what's been going on with our congregation for the last year. Wooden folding chairs. We still have them available. I've not really heard from anyone. So, uh, if you want wooden folding chairs, they are six. Do I hear seven? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they are available. They're in the records building, so we'll be sure to you know, allow you to get, get them out.
case anything, but as believers, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to get in the middle of the fight either unless the Lord is directing us in a certain direction. We can live at peace with very strong conviction that God is, he's in control, he's in charge, no matter what happens politically or in, you know, health wise or anything else. The battle belongs to him. He will direct his people. We need to stay in the word. That's the biggest thing I can say is stay in the word. That's where your peace is going to come from, is on your knees and reading his word and just with the Holy Spirit. So let's uh, sing these songs this morning to glorify him and to reassure ourselves that God is not weak. He is not absent. He is here in all situations. So let's, let's glorify his name this morning.
Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 to 13. When you enter the land which the, Lord, which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Our New Testament lesson is written in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. First Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at, your, at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, your adversary the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for our gospel. The gospel this morning is from the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Mark chapter 1, we begin with verse 9, where we read in Jesus' name. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Remain standing as we continue.
We're in First John, chapter three. For young disciples, I just want to point out the text is on the screen. I'm going to share that text with you in just a moment. First John chapter 3. We begin with verse 7. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin, because his seed abides in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. It's almost 50 years ago that I was convicted about Halloween. I already knew what seminary I wanted to attend. I was familiar with the synod of my, because my parents, that's where they were attending. But I never had the opportunity to be a part of a Lutheran Brethren congregation. So when I went to seminary, I was hitting it cold. And although I had almost two years yet to complete my undergraduate work, I had all the information, all the applications to prepare for the Lutheran Brethren Seminary. Now, one of the documents in that packet that I had to sign to even apply was that while I was in seminary, I would not smoke, I would not drink, I would not attend movies, I would not play cards, and I would not dance. Yeah. Knowing this, I just knew they would not have anything to do with Halloween. Because I knew it was not a Christian holiday. So we started preparing. Halloween was out. No trick-or-treating, no costumes. In fact, I kept the boys home from school the day of any Halloween parties. We as a family went out to dinner and then a movie. I could go to movies then before I went to the seminary, you see. Great family time. With two Halloweens under their belt, the boys were on Halloween. They thought no more about it. And then, then the inevitable happened. We moved from Oklahoma to Fergus Falls, Minnesota in the summer. Classes were well underway. And then one Sunday in the bulletin of the campus church where we were attending, this is a church that's on the, the campus, the students, uh, offices are on the campus, uh, uh, resident high school is on the campus, the, Bible college, a seminary, all on the campus, and then the campus church. So there was a notice in the bulletin for a Halloween. 
Halloween party at the church. The very seminary that would not allow me to have a glass of wine or attend a movie openly declared a celebration for Satan. At the time, I was midway through a course on Christian ethics taught by one of the synodical leaders. When approached, he seemed humored by the fact that I would even be concerned. It was then and there I determined to write my ethics thesis on Halloween. It was entitled Halloween, Is It for Christians? And my thesis statement was this. Halloween is becoming a more and more dangerous holiday each year. But more than that, Halloween has a history, a foundation, that is not only anti-Christian, but satanic. For this reason, the celebration of Halloween should not be condoned by Christians. With the research that I did came the understanding in my mind of what had been placed on my heart by the Holy Spirit. Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary defines the word Halloween as short for all hallow even, all saints eve. October 31st, observed especially with dressing up in disguise, trick-or-treating, and displaying jack-o'-lanterns during the evening. The celebration, called Halloween, predates the Christian church by several centuries. Halloween was developed from an ancient pagan festival and celebrated by Druids in the area that is now the United Kingdom, Germany, and northwestern France. The two-day festival is called Samhain, which means summer's end. Sounds okay. Mark the start of the dark winter season on All Hallows Day, and was, that was celebrated November 1st. Celebration started the night before, on All Hallows Eve. The Druids were a pagan group of devil worshippers. They observed the end of summer by making the sacrifices to the gods. It was the beginning of the Celtic year, and they believed on All Hallows evening that Samhain, the Lord of Death, sent evil spirits back from the dead to attack humans who could escape by only assuming disguises and look like spirits themselves. The waning of the sun and the approach of dark winter made the evil spirits rejoice and play nasty tricks. Food, shelter, entertainment were provided for these souls in, in order to appease them so evil spells would not be cast upon them. <coughs> On All Hallows Day, the celebration turned to the sun god. A fire rite was held in the early morning hours to help rejuvenate the sun and aid the banishing of the evil spirits. Torches were carried and, and waved. Human sacrifices were made by burning people to death in wicker cages, all to frighten away the evil spirits that had been released the night before. During the time of the Roman Empire, human sacrifices were prohibited from the celebration. They added to the festivities by honoring the Roman goddess of fruit, Pomona. 
is where fruit centerpieces and apples on a string and bobbing for apples all came from. Still pagan, just a bit more humane. During the Middle Ages, All Hallows' Eve became known as a time favored by witches and sorcerers. Black cats were burned in the cages that were previously used for humans. You see, most of our Halloween practices can be traced back to those old pagan rites and superstitions. In AD 835, the church stepped in. Pope Gregory III established a new holiday. He, he renamed All Hallows Day to All Saints Day. Halloween saint or one who is holy. However, the change of the name did not change the direction of the celebration. Unfortunately, Halloween season still finds many professing Christians encouraging their children to pay respects to the devil and his evil, demonic spirits. Even some Christian churches still fully sanction this homage to Satan in direct violation to the explicit teaching of the written word of Almighty God. Many church fellowship halls are decorated with, with all sorts of paraphernalia and trappings of Satan's kingdom holding haunted house affairs there. And it would be bad enough if it were just a part of the ancient past and maybe mythology, but modern day Satanists, witches, and warlocks still consider Halloween to be their high holy day. And yes, there are such things. Halloween is to a Satan worshiper what Easter is to Christians. Attempting to Christianize the pagan calendar was truly an act, has truly and absolutely failed. Why? Because few people celebrate All Saints Day. Well, many people celebrate All Saints Eve or Halloween instead. For a Christian to celebrate Halloween makes about as much sense as the people of Communist China celebrating our Independence Day on July 4th. Whatever you do, do not dismiss Satan, our old adversary, the devil, as a myth. The atheist will tell you there's no such thing as a soul. Therefore, there's no hell. The Universalist will tell you that everyone goes to heaven after death. The New Ager will tell you that, well, reincarnation takes place. Therefore, there cannot be any hell. The Psalmist, David, tells us in Psalm 9, 17, the wicked will return to Sheol, even all the nations who forget God. Sheol is a place of the dead, and is translated about as many times as hell. What does Joshua proclaim? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do not glorify Satan. He is not. He never will be equal in power to Almighty God. 
He is not a god, he is a fallen angel. He must first obtain permission from Almighty God before he can do anything. The question becomes, why would we want to serve someone like that? Why would anyone want to take part in Satan's holiday? Jesus the Christ, while he walked upon the face of this earth, demonstrated time and time again that he had power over Satan. He escaped the slaughter of the innocents when King Herod attempted to destroy him as an infant. He escaped the temptation in the wilderness when Satan tried to tempt him. He escaped the attempt on his life when his hometown of Nazareth tried to throw him off the cliff. He escaped the Pharisees' attempt to have him murdered. He escaped the rejection of his family, rejection of his nation, Israel, his close followers, the scattered disciples. He agonized in Gethsemane and he suffered voluntarily on that old rugged cross at Calvary. But through it all, Jesus the Christ had the victory. Why not say in the words of the great African-American gospel singer and theologian Andre Crouch, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. So, what does God's Word have to say? In the fifth chapter of Galatians, beginning in verse 19, and you can turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, keep going along. And this is the part this portion of scripture precedes Galatians 5, 22 and 23. That's where the quiz is this morning. What's Galatians 5, 22 and 23? Fruit of the Spirit. Okay. That's where the fruit of the Spirit comes in. But preceding that, this is what Paul writes. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. John Howe wrote an article for Christianity Today a number of years ago titled, What is Happy About Halloween? And here's how he ends the article. Whatever we do, let's not have ghosts, witches, or monsters. Let's leave that to the Prince of Darkness. We must focus on the light. The early Israelites were warned in Deuteronomy 18, and I'm going to share, that's what the Leland shared in our Old Testament lesson. 
lesson this morning, and I'm going to share it again. When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. One who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who uh, interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. And then he goes on to say, surely this applies to us as well. We are, as we have been singing this morning, we are in a battle. Why would we compromise in any way the enemy? Christian publisher and author, Dr. James Dobson, founder of Focus on the Family. In a letter to his supporters had this to say, there is a conspiracy being orchestrated with great care by those who hate the Christian system of values. They are dedicated to its destruction. A formidable army has been assembled on the battlefield, including the gay and lesbian movement, the media and the street corner pushers who are destroying our children with drugs, the medical personnel who are slaughtering our unborn babies, the euthanasia organizations that are urging us to kill the old, sick, and handicapped, the pornographers who are polluting our landscape. The media and universities who are committed to the humanistic perspective. These are the shock troops arrayed in full battle gear before us. And John reminds us in his letter Little children, make sure that no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous just as he, our Lord Jesus, is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you are the victor. We are thank you that you conquered all things that would become giants in our life. You conquered it all on the cross.
seems as though the church continues to just buy into practices of the world. Lord, keep us pure. Give us those clean hands. Keep us as a beacon. That light, the light of life.
to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever.